Uh, what's up guys going on camp out coming at you with a different kind of review today or shooting it differently I should say um, so the guys at dies I got it sent me a package uh, I had a couple conversations with them uh, shout out to just Dave or Dave Blockman if you guys are unaware check him out on Instagram I'll put a link to his description or a link to him in the description to the video um, but anyway we talked a few times and unlike other sneaker companies they were like we want you to give a very honest review uh, sometimes they say that but they don't necessarily mean it uh, but they've they've really like pushed on it like even if it's good uh, or bad we want to hear what your thoughts are so I got the package in I posted on Instagram the other day you might get a little glare from the light apologies I did do a diffuser on there, but for some strange reason, it's not diffusing. Um, so I, I put the box on the Instagram, and then I realized like how nice the packaging was, and that I didn't want to just open it up for Instagram, and I saved my initial thoughts for actually opening the package, which is why we're doing this kind of face-to-face -face transaction. Um, I did grab the butterfly knife. I think it was only fitting to get inside of here, but right off the bat, you got a cool little detail. I have another camera off to the side. You can probably see it in the frame uh, just to get some of the detail aspects of the box as we're going because I want to have two different shots, but whatever. Let me keep this a little lower so I stay in focus. Um, but yeah, they put this nice little seal on the top of the saran wrap or the bubble wrap, which I'm going to open right now. Box also has a wrap around it as well. I'm going to pick it up here so you guys can see it. There is a Butterfly here, uh, and like the moniker, or it is the moniker for the brand, but Die Zygotic uh, are twins that are the same, but actually aren't the same. So you'll see a lot of that kind of carrying through on the design of the sneakers themselves. Again, try to get you out of that frame there. We'll go here as well. So we get both, bing bang, boom, Die Zygotic. Now there are a whole bunch of details about the shoe that I should go over as well, but I kind of want to do the initial thought, and then if you want to skip to uh, detailing aspect and I guess all the other good stuff that uh, comes along with the shoe. Um, we'll do that in like a fast forward type of deal. So let me just open this up. Like I said, first time looking at them. So actually I'm just gonna do it the right way. Open it here and then I'll bring it up here so you guys can see it as well. So that is what's inside the box. So again, a butterfly opening. I haven't even looked at them. You know, I'm looking at them on camera like you are. Um, well, Okay, let me turn it around so I can see it myself. I will do, like I said, later on there'll be an overhead view. I'll do the same opening again, but we'll get a, a different perspective on it. Oh, they're like strapped in here. Oh, that's cool. So they have like a clear kind of plastic strapping to keep the shoe in place, which will be in the other frame. You'll see that in a second. Um, Slice slots. Let me look at the first shoe. I'm actually gonna take them both out. I don't know what to do, I'm so excited. Um, little card inside here. Is it Euro? Uh, this this will be in the detail part, so I'll put that to the side. Also, I'll do the letter that was sent in the detail part as well. I don't want to over skip or skip any of the detail aspects. There's this dope butterfly with the DZ stamping on there. Slide that out. And then there's actually extra laces as well inside a nice little burrowed out sleeve inside of the foam inside here. Box, very clean, has good weight to it. Um, I feel like it could look nice in the box collection, which I don't see a lot of boxes, but I do like this box. Sizing is on the side here, like a regular sneaker box. I will show you that here. And it says size 10 and a half, and then put this inside. Let's get into the shoes. I will go up and here, and show you those right off the bat. Two, three, you can see that it is not symmetrical. And color blocking, toe boxes, two different colors, um, very, very clean. Uh, just touching them off rip, the material is very nice on the shoe. Again, all detail will be later on in the actual overhead shot like we normally do, but first looks, I really like the shoe a lot. Um, it feels very light, the shoe is super light. Uh, Vibram outsole, which is dope. I feel like there's a outsole thing we should talk about too. So obviously you got two different colored outsoles as well. We can go up here so we can take a look at that. Also, very clean, very, very, very clean. I like that a lot actually. Huh. Hmm. Uh, a lot of detail on this shoe. I, I will say that like off rip, just looking at it. Uh, there's some mesh tooling here, nylon tooling on the underlays. You got perf nubuck, flat nubuck, hairy nubuck or hairy suede. 
good detailing aspects on the heel counters for the storyline of the sneaker. Again, on the back half of this, you'll get all that information. Uh, that, that line that carries through on the center portion of the toe box is, again, on the pull tabs on the back of the sneaker. You'll see those with the detailing aspects and the embroidery. I'll keep that kind of symmetrical for you so you can see it. Uh, that runs kind of up the, the straight line of the shoe as I'm looking at the other lace pull through in the center of the sneaker as well. It's, it's carried through there as well. So that's very nice. And it looks like a 3M detail aspect also. Um, there's good smooth leather on this and looking at it, it's very supple. Touching it, it's very supple as well. Good creasing, uh, but not like a tumbled leather, more, more, more like a fine leather, which is very clean. I like that as well. Ooh, there was a lot of good detail on this, actually, a lot. But I haven't tried them on either, so I don't know what the sizing is gonna fit like, but I'll do that before I shoot the overhead. Um, it's the, the weight too. For, for like how much detail is on the shoe and how much material is on the shoe, the, the fact that it still stayed so light is very, very, very clean. Uh, DZ on the Achilles on the Achilles, I should say. I'll put it like this so you can see what I'm talking about. Right on the upper portion, you'll see one in blue and one in like a light purple. I, I didn't know what to expect. Honestly, looking at pictures on Instagram, which again, in the description, you'll you'll get a link to their uh, their Instagram. If I'm going off rip of what I, matter of fact, I'm gonna put this shit on right now. I was gonna wait to try it on. This and a half is slightly, no oh, wait. Uh, the TTS is a little snug, so I would off rip probably say go up a half a size. This is my larger foot, so let me try the other one on too. Very comfortable inside though. Soft, and it carries through on a lightweight too. I could probably take the footbed out, truthfully. Yeah, you could definitely. Oh, that's a cool little aspect under there too, huh? So you got detailing on the footbeds. Uh, I could show you the other one as well. I just took this out because I to try it on, and then you have the uh, the butterfly all throughout the actual footbed of the sneaker, which is rare that people pay attention to that kind of detail. So very, very clean. <laughs> nice. And it's the details. Oh, it's the details. Let me slip this on. Yeah, taking the footbed out actually feels a little bit better, but the footbed is actually very comfortable. The one that comes standard inside the shoe, not much of a difference. So realistically, I would go up half a size sizing wise. Uh, do not do TTS. I would do 0.5 up just off the initial grab. These are heavy socks. I do have no-shows close by, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. Still comfortable, though. I, I will say that. It's not that much. It's not super tight where I'm like, oh, man, I can't wear these. This is more like, it's there. I can feel it. I know it's close. And I would feel comfortable with a half a size up. So I would definitely say 0.5 up if you like some room. If you like them snug, stay TTS. But if you like a little bit of room, go with 0.5. Very nice. Look dope on, too. They'll be an on foot. Don't worry, I'll do that too. Uh, anyway, let me uh, let me drop back. I'll reset this up with the overhead view, and uh, what we'll do is we'll do the the usual camp out review. All right. Okay, so this is the overhead portion of the review. What I wanted to do was get some of the the detail that was in the other video and just kind of display it for you guys. But I also want to kind of go over what the creator has slated for what they want you guys to know about the release. So we'll start with this receipt thing, right? It came with a box, it's very heavy. It feels like like card stock, but it's 300 gram. Uh, most places use 250. I wanna see what kind of details are on here. It's cool, so you have a description uh, of the shoe. It's the SKU description, Project Alpha Momotaro, Peach Boy, Mizuyuro Edition, variant size 10.5, men's, women's 12. Unit price is 260. Like I said, they sent me the pair. Uh, and then there attaches a note, Dear Michael, thank you for working with the whole team for Project Alpha production product launch. It has been almost three years since we kicked off Project Alpha. It is such a long journey for us. We appreciate your support and it has been an honor and pleasure hearing your opinion. House of Dizygotic doesn't only mean the design house here in Arizona and New York or Nectar Lab in China. It's also the artist, the collectors, and the community. It's you. Welcome aboard. Sincerely, House of Dizygotic. Okay, so branding is a logo, butterfly with asymmetrical wings. Dizygotic is uh, fraternal twins, things that are originally expected to be the same but are actually different. So that's why we get this entire kind of dichotomy between the two different shoes or same shoe, two different colorways and the way that the material is laid out. Um, I'm gonna take them out of the box real quick and we can get into some more detailing aspects. We saw the box, oh, let me show you that real quick before I take this completely out. So scooch this back a little bit and you guys can see this little, little strapping in here. So for support for the sneaker inside the shoe while it's in the box, very, very clean. I'm gonna scroll up to this little area here and show you guys that there is a 
butterfly here. Uh, and if you can see the detail a little bit more clearly, I'll rotate it so we get some of the shadow out. Um, you can see the D and the Z. I'll take a picture so you guys can get all the detailing aspects of this as well. Very cool addition and it's a pin. Let's go down here. We have our extra flat laces, which I spoke about before, but nice little sleeve for them like it was created just for them so obviously the box detailing which I'll get into uh, as we're going down a list or short list of stuff that we want to pay attention to is in there so you have looks like two white if you want to get that clean look on both and then you have a navy with a 3m speckle and then a light lavender with a 3m speckle as well all dizygotic on the aglets of the lace very very clean and then uh, I'm gonna pick up the the right shoe and kind of go over Show you guys some of the detailing on the shoe itself. I'm doing a super up close view of the shoe so you guys can see all the materials. Uh, so nylon webbing across here, um, 3M stitched through it, uh, mesh underlays on both of those, very supple leather in the light, almost bone gray, and then that, I guess pewter, I guess you can call it pewter uh, kind of blue pewter steel blue on the other leather just above down the lace grommet area uh, navy perforated suede on the other underlay just past that bone coloring then you have uh, almost like a camel suede super supple super soft I, I, I can't I, I don't know if I'm showing the brush strokes well enough in here but there are brush strokes galore all over this sneaker and then you have another gray hit past that camel color or that sand color I should say uh, towards the heel cup portion and then we could roll around to the back side where the graphic is get you guys super close in the detail uh, very very clean I like all of the aesthetics on this shoe um, the way that everything kind of pops it's the details for me uh, I mean I'm sure most of the people watching this channel are about the details as well but if you're not and you're just looking at a sneaker and you're like hmm what makes this different from any other shoe uh, detail detail and attention to detail um, are very big and right now we're kind of getting into a clustered phase of people just pumping out sneakers so I'm, I'm leaning towards more independence so it's nice to see you know stuff like this popping up um, anyway let's keep rolling around this bad boy I'll get into this more to some more details of the shoe let me go this way die zygotic you got your butterfly and the die zygotic uh, moniker underneath there, Momotaro and the, the the lace through, and then that rolls all the way up through the center of the shoe as well. Project Alpha Development, um, basically the silhouette, the structure, and the outline designed to have perfect firm shape with or without your foot in it. Um, I can actually attest to that because it's, I don't have anything inside the shoe right now. There's nothing, not even the, uh, no, no paper, no, no anything. And it's holding, it's complete shape a lot of times you'll see this happen the the tongue will fall down inside the shoe uh lace not tied it's not tucked behind where you can hold the tongue up like you'll you'll see a lot like people take it and tuck it back here and then it keeps your tongue from falling down and if you don't know that trick now you do so i, I mean th that's not even the case here there's, there's the shoe structure is is meant to hold its exact um dimensions which is very very clean i like that aspect as well again back to details uh next we got our overlays so the overlays on the shoe as you guys can probably tell already no two areas are the same except um i don't know if you guys are paying attention to them or not but you got this brown sand color that's indicative and in the same place on both shoes this leather in the pewter is the same structure towards the lateral and medial sides and then the mesh underlays um, underneath the nylon webbing are the only three things that are identical that I can tell uh, I mean maybe I'm overlooking something maybe you see something I don't but from what I saw looking over the entire shoes were those three areas that would be the same and that's uh, that's saying something. <laughs> uh, but they also had, I, I believe it was 25 samples uh, or 25 versions of this sample before they got to where they wanted to get to, which I think is very uh, telling in how much thought and process or how much thought went into the process of designing the shoe itself. Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit lengthy. I'm going to try and find ways to knock it down so it's not so long of a review. So really quick, I went ahead and threw flats into the shoe and uh, nice another little detail hit here. You can see that there's a rope in the right and you can see that there's a flat in the left. If you pay attention, this rope looks like it's rounded out just for this, this loop, but it's actually, it works out for the flat as well. So when you put your flat laces in, they're not gonna curl up on their sides. I know it's a small detail thing, but that's something that would have would have really like made me mad if I put a flat in here and it just looked like it doesn't, or it wasn't made for the sneaker itself. I, again, small details, but they're still details. So anyway, uh, let's continue on. Uh, material's the easiest part of the shoe. I, I think anybody, um, 
who, who messes with shoes knows that you're not going to run into too much difficulty. If, if you want to splurge and you want to spend the money, you pay for the best materials. And that's pretty much, boom, done. Uh, the hardest part is getting your colorways. And basically what they did was they, they hand dyed their colorways to match what they were looking for on their shoes or on the shoes. So, I mean, kudos to that right off rip because it's rare that you see that people try and Pantone their own colors. So the other cool thing about the, the sneakers that they, they didn't mess these up, obviously, because the shoe is supposed to be different in all aspects from one to the other, no two parts to be the same. The outsoles are no different. So you have a navy and you also have a white. Um, I believe that this is the first time Vibram has done that for the shoe. I mean, they're obviously not just... They're, they're making them specifically for these collaborations or for these sneaker drops because, I mean, you're, you're, the way that the shoe set up is they don't do, you know, one pair you'll find a navy on the right and then uh, a white on the, or the inverse. They don't inverse them, so they would make two and then just separate it. They're actually made individually, which is, you know, another detailing thing uh, you don't normally come by. Next up, uh, the strobel board, uh, which is the part that I showed you guys underneath here. So they did pff, insane. You, you'll never, hardly ever, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a design on that portion of the sneaker. Uh, you're usually just checking in there to see if the shoe's real or fake by the stitches. But for this, they actually designed that to have a look as well, which I think is a hidden little, little gem for those of you who are into the intricacies of sneakers. Um, so Mizuyuro is a graphic artist from Osaka, Japan. Um, there's a documentary on the artist or actually on the uh, the website. So everything in everything you're looking for, if you want detail wise from the brand, will actually be in the description to the video. So I'll link their website. You guys can go check it out. And then we have Makoto. Um, I, I might butcher the names a little bit, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, every once in a while, I'm not uh, too quick on those. But this is the other artist who did this colorway. Um, they did the graphics for the shoes. Both artist hits are on the heels of the uh, the shoes, Mizuro and uh, Makoto. If I'm not butchering it. Anyway, uh, moving along, we have uh, the shoe box, which we kind of went through already, but uh, the the creator's notes about the shoe box design is that they, they went through an arduous task trying to get that box exactly where they wanted to get it to. Um, I believe it was something like several months after development, they had to scratch everything they had done and get rid of the designer, which I believe was from Balenciaga. So, I mean, they, they definitely dipped their hands into many pots trying to get the construction of the shoes to where they wanted them. So kudos again. Uh, obviously, we have half size available because I have a 10.5, which is also another crucial thing. You see a lot of 9, 10, 11, and you're like, ooh, we should have got a half size. Um, the receipt holder, I think I touched on that as well. It's 300 GSM paper instead of the standard 250 cardstock. So again, enough. they just kind of went up and above no matter what they did. So the original idea behind the um, the collaboration was to catch the Tokyo Olympics, but obviously they're coming out now, so they were a little behind schedule. But uh, Momotaro, Peach Boy is a Japanese folktale. And then lastly, we got the factory. Um, they did a lot of research to figure out which factories they wanted to use and because of all the request for detailing on the sneaker, like I would imagine it was difficult for them to land on a place that would do everything they wanted to do from dying to, you know, asymmetrical to uh, just construction of the shoe itself because I believe it's 250 handmade pairs. Um, and the idea that they got behind that was, um, I believe, uh, New Balance's Super Team, Super Team 33, uh, which was back in 2007, but they, they shut it down because of uh, cost, wasn't cost effective. <laughs> um, I, I'm being, but again, but I think that they're not too worried about spending money to make a good shoe. So that's always a plus as well. Uh, that's the other kudos I want to throw out there is that they were able to reach out to people who, you know, have a love for sneakers as opposed to just influence sneakers, which I think are two totally different things. And um, having an appreciation for the design inside of a sneaker, uh, how it's constructed, why it's constructed, and um, just the the man hours that go into the thought process are, are um, details that don't go unseen uh, with certain people and certain groups. So thumbs up. I, I really don't have, <laughs> I don't have any Thing bad to say about the shoe which is tricky um i don't uh, there's no glue stains they're all made by hand and inspected as they're made so if you come across an issue on this i'm pretty sure it's a one in a million shot but uh, i'm happy to have one of the first pieces that they've ever done um yeah thumbs up for me
for you, for the shoe, for everybody. <laughs> anyway, uh, questions, comments in the comment section. If you guys, again, uh, have anything you want to talk about, hit the comment section or, you know, whatever. I'm out of here. Peace.